So we're going to talk about noise and shielding and getting rid of it and does it affect your tone? Does actually the hum in your guitar affect, affect your tone? Um, so radio frequency interference happens everywhere. It happens from uh, fluorescent lights, it happens from neon, it happens from dimmer switches, it happens from all kinds of stuff and not just radio stations. In fact, although that's probably the worst case scenario, if you've ever been playing somewhere close to a radio station with an unshielded guitar, um, something really old maybe, and all of a sudden you walk over to your amp and you can hear people talking in your amp. That's how much radio interference in a high impedance guitar circuit can be uh, picked up. It's, it's crazy. We don't usually hear voices, well, I'll speak for myself, I don't usually hear voices that I'm not supposed to hear. However, we do hear a lot of hum and a lot of noises and cracks and pops and stuff, uh, especially in older buildings. Um, and we talked about in our other blog how humbuckers work, how to minimize this, but there's always going to be a little bit of noise just because of the way a guitar circuit is designed, so how can we get rid of that? Well, there's a guy, his name was Faraday, and he basically designed a thing, and his was a cage. Actually, it was like a grid like this. And what he said that if there was radio frequency interference coming in from the outside, and that the holes in the cage were smaller than the waves that were trying to get in, that it would basically block them. If but radio frequencies bounce all over the place if it was completely enclosing whatever was inside of it uh, it could do that so that's basically what we're trying to do with our guitar so uh, let's talk about shielding a control cavity on a guitar and we're going to talk about a couple different things actually but shielding a control cavity so I drew because it was easier to draw this is my crude drawing of a Telecaster control cavity when we when we shield this thing what we want is basically and we'll use a different color and everything what we want is we want a conductive shield that goes all the way around this thing with no breaks in it and we actually want that to extend through the channel over here and around in our output jack also Okay, usually that's like a hole drilled through there for like a, for a Telecaster, for instance. We want all of this to be 100% sealed. Not sealed, but covered by a conductive material. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, the cheap, cheap, cheap way is spray adhesive and aluminum foil. Um, there is also copper tape. When you buy copper tape, you can get it a couple of different places. You can go to a, the cheapest place to get it actually, is you go to a garden center and get slug stopping tape because slugs don't like to crawl across the copper apparently it protects your roses the problem with buying stuff like that is you gotta make sure that when you use it that you like fold it over if, you, if you're gonna make a seam in it you gotta fold it over so that it stays conductive all the way through because sometimes the glue on some of this stuff is not conductive and it break, it'll break the contact of the, con the constant copper um, probably the the most thorough way to do it is with copper or is with shielding paint and you can buy this from a couple of outlets on the internet it's a little bit expensive but you're only going to do it once so um, coat everything and for instance like on a Telecaster uh, if you're going to do this there's a couple things you got to remember it depends on the jack style on your on your telly um, the ones we use when we build guitars are the barrel style that slide into here so it's real easy because um, you can just coat the inside of there and the metal from that will touch it. If you have the kind that screws with a screw on the outside, you know, like, like that normal shape, make sure that that conductive paint or whatever you're using to shield comes outside on the outside of the guitar to make contact with the output jack, the outside of the output jack. Um, the, the cool part about a Telecaster is, since this top plate is metal, it is going to top. It's going to form the top part of your shield. But what you do have to make sure again is to make sure that this bottom 
part comes up here kind of like that um, so that it makes contact with the metal top plate all the way around also if you're gonna and you also need to make sure that uh, and this is why conductive sh shielding paint works better because you'll have like the hole for the pickup wire that goes off to the the pickup cavity you can actually you, this is super anal but it's the real right way to do it you can actually use shielding paint put it on a pipe cleaner and you can actually put shielding paint inside that inside that hole there's usually one up here to go to the neck for a telecaster for instance same thing so then when we go to the pickup cavities so here's our pickup cavity and we'll do a strap pickup cavity because so here's our strap pickup cavity we've got three of them my super crude drawing here and on an American Standard the cavity looks like that and it's kind of a pain because you have to stuff foil in there and when you do it you have to make sure that it kind of comes up over here like this over the outside edges so shielding paint is a little bit easier to use so you make sure it comes up over the outside edges and then you put it on the back side of your pit guard and it covers it up completely and then you're saying well wait a minute I put this awesome Faraday cage in all of my um, in all of my pickup cavities and then and we won't don't want to forget this and then because this one like in a strat is different from the pickup cavity for the control panel is over here they're not connected so now we have to make sure that they're grounded so um, one way to do it is to take a brass screw and screw it into the body and then solder the shielding to it or a shielding wire to it, connect it to the other one and do the same thing so everything is connected. Um, that's one way of doing it and that's honestly probably one of the easier ways to do it actually. And then you say well okay well I have everything's tied together it's all grounded it's touching, everything's touching, I have a hundred percent shield around all the controls except what about my pickups? because the pickups are however many thousands of winds making basically an AM antenna pretty much right uh, and picking up just as much noise as and more probably than the rest of this stuff so what can I do about that? Well there is some stuff we can do and some of it takes a little bit more know-how and skill than than others so a normal humbucker uh, let's see if I've got a cover over here so a normal humbucker um, has a basically a Faraday cage coming around it anyway because you put the the humbucker goes up in the bottom bottom and the top is metal and it is big and then that is shielded separately the way we build them here is we build uh, five wire humbuckers so you have your normal four wires for the coil and then a separate ground from the from the case and now you're all of a sudden that that is shielded the whole thing is shielded already but what if you don't run a cover um, then you have a little bit of exposure fortunately with a humbucker it's a lot quieter with a single coil though with a single coil you have potentially like two and a half inches of exposed coil uh, that could be that could, could, could pick up noise not a lot of people do this but this is something that can be done now I personally don't do it uh, I think the quality of the pickup has a lot to do with how noisy the pickup is in the first place my Telecaster pick up, pickups aren't that noisy and neither are my P90s so I don't worry about this but something that can be done especially if you don't want to um, change the pickups in your guitar is you can wrap this exposed coil in uh, either pickup tape which is a very thin almost masking tape stuff and then you can take like a quarter inch uh, copper shielding tape and wrap around the coil but here's the, the scary part you in order for this to work you actually have to solder a wire to the copper and then ground it to the guitar so a lot of people don't like to do that because they don't want to 
mess up their coil in their, in their pickup. Um, so at that point, if you're really, really worried about noise, it might be possible or better to just get a new pickup. Um, because that's because basically what you have to do, you have your two conductors coming out like this. You really have to add a third one and solder it to that, to that shield. This brings up another thing. Um, Telecaster neck pickups. Telecaster neck pickups usually have a cover over them. So now we have our Faraday cage, right? Um, and it has, it is usually soldered to the center lug of the little cover coming through here. There isn't a third wire. And so that is grounded and you have this cover over it and it's grounded. The problem with it is, is if you use any kind of out of phase settings or anything like that, you end up switching the negative to the positive and all of a sudden your cover is hot. So when you touch your cover, it makes a bunch of noise. So what you got to do in that case, what I usually do is I usually cut this little thing right here and I actually solder a third wire to that little leg and I ground it separately. I actually do that on all of my installs, not just the ones that we run out of phase because I, I think it quiets it down. So uh, that, that is a thing. Um, the same thing with a Telecaster bridge pickup with a separate base plate. Depending on which pickup you are flipping for your out of phase tones, um, you might have to ground that bottom plate separately from the pickup and remove it from where it's grounded to the actual coil itself. If you do all this stuff, your guitar is going to end up being a lot quieter than it was when you started. Does it make any difference in tone? That depends on how much you can hear, you know, how, how, how finicky you are about your tone, and it also depends on whether you're going to hear it or not, and it also depends on how noisy it was in the first place. Because remember, if we have our sound coming out of our guitar, and it doesn't really look like this, uh, obviously it looks all jaggedy and stuff because of our distortion pedals and all that, but what if we have, uh, what if we have this much hum out of phase with our guitar? Then that means that from this, from here to here in our signal has a bunch of noise in it. That means, depending on what's out of phase with what, we might not be hearing some of our guitar tone. It's there. It's not that we're changing our guitar tone by get, getting rid of the hum, but it's just being masked by all that noise is the bottom line. So, it's possible that you could have harmonics and some various feedback tones and overtones and stuff that you're not hearing right now because your guitar is so noisy and once it goes away you might have like some more left hand expression as you fret notes you might have uh, some interesting pick attack dynamics that weren't there because they were all being masked by that noise that was taking up some of your signal in your guitar so it doesn't change the tone but it maybe will unmask some of it that is already there so this is an excellent, very cheap thing to do to your guitar to make your guitar sound better, to get rid of hum, it's less annoying, it doesn't cost a whole lot, and it might be the first step in your guitar modification process, even before you go buy new pickups or before you go buy anything, because if you bought new pickups and that noise was still there, you'd be kind of irritated. So maybe do that first, and then you've got a good basis to go from, and you can start building your tone from there, if you don't even find it, uh, just shield in your pickups. So, shield everything, make sure it's grounded, make sure, oh and I didn't mention this, make sure that the controls that aren't supposed to touch that shielding don't touch it. So, the back sides of blade switches, the back sides of pots, pots usually are grounded so that usually doesn't matter but the thing is is like your tone cap and stuff like that if the wrong side of the tone cap touches it then your tone knob doesn't work so make sure that anything that you put in that cavity when you put it in that the wires are nice and neat enough everything's nice and neat enough that it doesn't touch where it's not supposed to touch and you just have a nice neat Faraday cage around so you don't hear voices when you're not supposed to if you have any other questions that you want to add to our blog 
please let us know. And thanks for stopping by, and we will see you next time.